नमस्कार वी विल बी कंटिन्यूइंग विथ दी विथ आर डिस्कशन ऑन दी साइकोलॉजिकल इन्फ्लुएंसेज ऑन कंज्यूमर डिसीजन मेकिंग एंड हियर वी विल बी टुडे स्टार्टिंग विथ दी सेकेंड साइकोलॉजिकल इन्फ्लुएंस ऑन कंज्यूमर डिसीजन मेकिंग इन द फॉर्म ऑफ कंज्यूमर लर्निंग एज फार एज दिस पर्टिकुलर मॉड्यूल इज कंसर्न इट इज नंबर्ड सिक्स पॉइंट टू फॉर इजी रेफरेंस um we, we this particular module is called consumer learning and it shall be uh, it sh shall be covered in a total of 4 hours uh, as far as the uh, contents of this particular module 6.2 are concerned we will start uh, with uh, we will discuss the definition and meaning of consumer learning uh, we will talk about the basic elements uh, the nature and characteristics of consumer learning uh, we will move on to discuss the various approaches to learning uh we will talk about the learning theories uh, and the implications for the marketer which we shall be discussing in the form of part 1 part 2 and part 3 and finally we will be concluding uh, with uh you know uh, discussing learning in the context of how marketers can draw upon uh, you know the study of learning and what could be the implications for a marketer in today's session we will be speaking about uh, the definition and meaning of consumer learning we will be talking about the basic elements uh, the nature and characteristics of consumer learning we should also be speaking on the approaches to learning and uh, we will uh, start with the learning theories uh, where we will uh, just uh, talk about one of the theories and uh, thereafter we shall uh, move uh, further tomorrow when we continue with the implication of that theory and uh, with uh, the other the rest of the theories so to begin uh, with we start with 6.2.1 which is definition and meaning of of consumer learning now learning has been defined as a relatively permanent change in our behavior that occurs as a result of experience now this experience can be uh, our own experience and can be experiences of others but nevertheless it is a relatively permanent change that occurs in our experience uh, because of certain kinds of experiences now when we talk about learning in the context of consumer behavior we are going to speak of it in terms of consumer learning which is defined as a process by which people gain information they they gather information they interpret information about various products and services and use this information and this knowledge uh, in uh, the in the in in the buying decision process in their buying patterns and their consumption behavior shiftman has uh, defined a consumer learning as a Uh, you know he says that consumer learning can be thought of as a process by which individuals acquire the purchase and consumption knowledge and experience that they apply to future uh, related uh, behavior so uh, this is how uh, shiftman uh, defines consumer learning as a process by which individuals acquire uh, the purchase and consumption knowledge and experience that they apply to future related behavior but we shall uh, discuss uh, this definition uh, on consumer learning in terms of a process by which people gain information they gather information they interpret information regarding products and services regarding brands and they use this information in the consumer decision making process or in their consumption patterns and their buying behaviors so uh, this is how we define uh, uh, consumer learning now um, consumer learning may be either intentional or incidental okay so uh, you know uh, intentional uh, learning is when um, it is very active in nature and um it is or it is a part of the conscious effort or it is a part of a careful search uh, for information by the consumer so when the consumer search uh, goes in actively for a search of information and he is very careful about uh, the search for information we call it uh, intentional learning on the other hand uh, there is also something called incidental learning where learn learning occurs as a matter of chance it could just occur either because of an accident or without any effort so it's more passive in nature so uh, we can apply, we can say learning can be both intentional and incidental it is intentional when uh, the consumer uh, treats it as with uh, you know approach treats it as an active uh, you know search for information he tries to look out for information about products and services 
and so he is very conscious about to, to gather information, to collect information, to process it and comprehend it. On the other hand, uh, there is also incidental uh, information where uh, information or learning, uh, information gets gathered as a matter of chance and so learning occurs uh, without much, ex without any effort, uh, just occurs as a matter of chance or because of any kind of an accident or some kind of an experience. So, learning may be intentional and incidental. Now, let us come to the basic elements, the nature and the characteristics of consumer learning. We will start uh, with the elements of learning. And when we talk of uh, the learning process, we say that the learning process comprises four components or uh, four uh, you know, elements. These are motives, cues, response and reinforcement. We will uh, talk about uh, these uh, four elements and then we will uh, you know, explain them with the help of two examples. Now, to begin with uh, motives, we have already discussed motives in the previous class where we defined it as an inner urge uh, to move towards a particular goal. And um, here, uh, when we talk of motives, we all know that they lie at the very heart of consumer behavior. When a person is faced with a need or a want, uh, there occurs an urge within him to act towards fulfillment of the need or want uh, through problem solving or through uh, the purchase decision making process. So, the marketer here can play a very important role in three ways, sorry in two ways. One identifying uh, or helping the consumer identify the subconscious and the hidden motives. We have discussed earlier that uh, many a times uh, needs and wants uh, especially needs remain latent, they remain in the subconscious mind of the consumer and the consumer may not be able to uh, realize them. So, uh, it is the marketer's job to help the consumer identify such needs. So, uh, you know one way by which a marketer could uh, play a role with respect to motives is by identifying uh, the subconscious motives. The second way is by triggering off the needs. Uh, we all know needs can be triggered off by through through uh, by internal stimuli as well as by external stimuli. So, um, the marketer has a role to play when he can trigger off these motives and desires uh, especially while playing uh, especially through the external stimuli uh, which could be any and all of his four P's. Uh, in both the ways uh, the consumer will be motivated to search for information so far as the product or service uh, is concerned and so as to be able to satisfy his need or his want. So, motives are basically the inner urge which uh, you know which actually relate to a need or a want and the con there occurs in a consumer an urge to uh, you know within him to act, to purchase, to consume certain goods and services uh, so as to be able to satisfy that particular need or want. And as I said, the marketer could play a role either by triggering off the need process through in, through the internal and external stimuli, or by identifying those stimuli, uh, identifying those needs which lie within a consumer in a subconscious state. Now, coming to cues, a cue is a weak uh, stimuli. It is a weak stimuli that gives uh, strength and direction to the motive. So, uh, it is with the cues. It is with these weaker stimuli that the urge becomes stronger and it gives strength and direction to the inner urge. Now, all of the four P's can act as cues uh, for uh, uh, for uh, for um, you know uh, for a consumer. They they all of these act as cues uh, and give direction to the motives. Uh, these cues uh, could be related to the product, the price, the place, or the promotion. So, entire marketing mix could act as a cue and gives it gives direction, it gives strength to the motives. Let us see uh, and talk about how the first P acts as a cue. The product itself, the uh, attributes, the features, the benefits, uh, the packaging, the color, uh, the style of the you know the the style the, the aesthetics the style of the product as well as the uh, aesthetics and design of the packaging itself uh, also uh, you know e packaging being easy to carry uh, convenient conveniently to, you know handle, handled conveniently or even uh, help you know uh, re as a re reusable uh, container to be uh, you to be put in use later on all of these uh, could basically act uh, as stimuli especially we'll speak of the packaging uh, component here you know the the manner in which a package is designed the color the aesthetics 
also uh, the very fact that a package may be easy to carry or maybe uh, something which we can store with us and reuse later on can all act as cues so far as the first p the product is concerned this is not to say that uh, the other uh, the, uh, the 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 product the, the the features the attributes and benefits do not act as cues they are even stronger cues and they also uh, basically uh, give strength and direction to an inner urge to satisfy a particular need or want to the purchase of a good or pro product product or service offering uh, the second p which is price also acts as a cue uh, the discounts the very sales or uh, you know uh, you know deals on uh, various products which are economic deals all of these uh, basically could act as cues could act as stimuli uh, the third p which is uh, the place uh, the store uh, the layout the ambience the atmosphere the window dressing the display all of this also acts as cues and finally the promotion the fourth p which is in the form of advertisement uh, the message content the message context the jingle the music the graphics all of this also act as cues so a cue is something which is a weak stimuli which gives strength and direction to the motives and any and all of the four p's can act as cues in for a for a consumer the third element is response uh, the response here refers to the behavior on the part of the consumer behavior here implying the act of purchase and or either going in for the act of purchase or uh, you know postponing the act of purchase or not going in for the act of purchase any and all of these will act a, as a response on the part of the consumer let us talk about the response in the form of a, an act of purchase let us say that here the consumer uh, finds you know he has a need and uh, with to the particular motive is provided strength and intensity via the cues and now he decides to purchase so the act of purchase acts as a response it is how a person is going to react towards the stimulus or towards the drive and it, it that is going to reflect a response on his part so this response as i said could take different forms either at the act of purchase itself he he decides to buy the product or service offering and he he decides to purchase it second it could be just you know uh, a learning for the future that is uh, he he uh, he is exposed to uh, the cues and it at, uh, you know it gets stored in his memory as, as a learning for future or as, as a learning to be uh, drawn inputs from in the lay sometime later sometime future and so in this case what he does is he postpones his purchase so uh, the third option uh, third third uh, you know output which can occur as a part of the response is that a favorable attitude uh, may get created so because of the uh, cue uh, and uh, his exposure to the cue the the uh, consumer learns about uh, or gains information about the product or service offering and develops a predisposition towards it he develops a favorable attitude towards or a liking towards it which he will uh, he which which he can you know refer to which which gets stored in his memory to be retrieved later on when as and when he uh, needs to make a purchase and go in for the purchase decision process so uh, the response here basically refers to uh, how does a consumer react towards the cue and uh, how does he react towards the drive or towards the stimulus uh, it could take forms of instant purchase or immediate purchase uh, it could also be a learning for the future where the purchase is postponed for the future or it can be a favorable image or a favorable attitude towards the product or the brand and uh, the consumer could develop an intention to buy uh, this gets stored in his memory and later on when he decides to buy the product or service offering he can always consider the particular brand so this is what happens with response in the in the in in, in response uh, now we come to reinforcement so as i just said let us take a case where um, the person decides to buy the product he decides to go in for a purchase of the product now uh, re re reinforcement is in the form of uh, the the reward that comes along with the uh, with the the, with the purchase uh, consumption and usage of the product or service offering so uh, this reinforcement uh, could be either a positive or negative uh, and uh, you know uh, as we see uh, this positive or negative reinforcement will actually uh, have an impact on learning for the future 
in the sense that if it's a positive reinforcement the behavior gets reinforced and the person is more likely to purchase the product or service offering or and or the brand uh, later on again when he requires it on the other hand when uh, it's when the when there is a negative reinforcement uh, the person uh, is uh, learns not to use the product or service of in in the future or not to use a particular brand in future so what we mean by a reinforcement is that uh, you know any action always has a reaction and based on the reaction the uh, behavior will get reinforced if the action um, is followed by a reinforcement or by a reaction that is positive in nature or it is pleasant or rewarding in nature uh, the behavior uh, gets positively reinforced and the likelihood of the repetition of the action or the behavior increases this holds true uh, vice versa in the sense that if the action is followed by a reaction that is unpleasant or unfavorable or negative or uh, dissatisfying uh, the action again gets reinforced or the and the likelihood of a repetition of that action uh, you know the gets uh, you know it, it gets negatively reinforced and the likelihood of the repetition of that action will decrease so in terms of consumer learning if a person buys a particular product or service offering and the purchase leads to satisfaction and delight uh, it lives up to its expectations the consumer uh, would feel uh, he has uh, he has had a rewarding experience he would feel that he has got his value for money and uh, positive reinforcement will occur as positive reinforcement occurs learning will take place and the consumer will learn to buy the product or pay recognize the product or the brand again on the other hand if he feels that um, he is dissatisfied with the product or service offering or the brand then he would learn not to buy the same product or not to buy the same brand again in fact positive reinforcement uh, in fact we, we we i like to stress here that it is positive reinforcement which actually leads to development of brand loyalty so here what we trying to say in reinforcement is that every action action here was the response is going to be is going to be followed by a reaction and this reaction comes in the form of reinforcement if it is a positive reaction the behavior preceding the uh, you know reinforcement is more likely to occur again if it's a negative reinforcement the behavior preceding the action is less likely to occur again now let us explain uh, this process uh, or these components uh, through an example we'll take two examples and we will uh, you know deal with or talk about them uh, let's take the first example where uh, there is an mba student who actually uh, requires a business suit for his interview and um, you know we have a motive here uh, it is uh, relevant to his need and goal uh he, he, and it's this particular need that will motivate an action so what is the motive or what is the need here uh, the need is requirement of a business suit for his for an interview uh, the cues here could be the stimuli or the uh, symbols that drive action uh, it will direct a drive when uh, they match a consumer's expectations so uh, the cues could be in the form of discounts or sales or it could be in the form of good deals or it could also be in the form of good designs okay uh, or even a good brand the response here is the student sees a discount uh, you know response here is basically an action to satisfy a need so uh, here the student sees a discount in a store and uh, goes in and purchases uh, the suit from the shop or he is unable to find a color of his choice uh, but he likes the brand or the dealer and so he decides to come back after a week when the fresh stock arrives and so that he can get a color of his choice so uh, you know a response could either be immediate where because he sees a deal because he sees a good discount on uh, on a particular suit uh, in uh, being offered by a store he decides to just enter the store and purchase it instantly or he enters the store uh, he likes the store he likes the uh, product variety the assortment he like he he's, he has a favorable attitude towards the brand he also is uh, he likes the manner in which the store uh, you know or dealer has dealt with him but he finds that he is not getting a suit of a suit which which is which is in color of that he he wants and he is not getting a color of his choice so he decides to postpone his purchase and get back to the store a week later so that he can find a, a color which which is which 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 he wants to buy a color which actually is his choice so uh, a response could either be instant and immediate or it could be something which is postponed for the future 
The reinforcement is the feedback in the form of a reward uh, which the consumer receives. So if he buys the suit and finds it uh, you know, comfortable, if he finds it long lasting, if people appreciate it and if he, 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 if he, you know, gets a, if he feels he's got a good value for money, he would buy the same brand uh, or he would buy other things from the same shop again. But in case he doesn't uh, you know, find, uh, he doesn't get rewarded uh, positively, he, does, he buys the suit, but he realizes uh, it's not uh, too well stitched, or uh, the, the the color is you know wearing off. In that case, uh, he would uh, change his attitude towards the brand. He, he his behavior is negatively reinforced, and he would definitely change his brand the next time he wants to buy a business suit. So this is how we see uh, the entire process occur. We start with a motive, uh, which is uh, given strength and intensity and direction uh, through a drive. And then the consumer is motivated to act either instantly or uh, through by postponing his purchase. And then uh, there is a reinforcement to that act of purchase in the form of a positive reinforcement or a negative reinforcement, both of which will have an, a, you know, an impact on future decisions. In case the reinforcement is positive, uh, he will uh, he, he will buy the brand again in case it is not he will uh, he will not buy it again and in fact he may also spread a negative word of mouth about it let us come to another example where we see that there is a man who is in shopping in a mall and he feels hungry so uh, the motive here is the hunger need gets triggered off and the cues could be in the form of a smell of or aroma of cakes and pastries or it could be a very uh, well lit good confectionery store with a good display of goodies to eat uh, you know a display of good goodies in its uh, window or in its shelf or it could be billboards and banners publicizing a brand so it could be any and all of these which could act as cues uh, the reaction is or the response is that the person sorry the response is or the act or the act is that the person goes and buys the pastry and eats it and reinforcement or reaction is in the form of he is liking the pastry and asking for more or he does not find it good and eat something else somewhere. So, uh, he learns again that he is not going to come back to this particular confectionery store again to buy pastries as he has found uh, the experience dissatisfying. So, uh, you know in this in this way we can relate the definition of learning where we said that learning is a relatively permanent change in behavior which occurs as a result of experience. He also said that consumer learning is when people gather information about a particular product or a service or about brands, they evaluate it, they, they, com they comprehend information, evaluate uh, it or analyze it and then finally decide to take an action and if this action is satisfying, behavior gets reinforced, learning occurs if this action, whatever way this action is uh, reinforced. If it is a positive reinforcement, learning will occur to patronize and a brand on the other hand it is a negative reinforcement learning is not to patronize the particular brand. Now let us come to the second uh, topic here which we will discuss the nature and characteristics of learning. We have just discussed the elements so now let us move into discussing the nature and characteristics of learning. The first uh, characteristic of learning is that learning involves a change in behavior. Uh, in terms of um, you know consumer learning it means that a consumer who is exposed to a marketing stimuli may react uh, to it through purchase and consumption. Uh, if his experience is satisfying he learns to repeat it uh, and uh, uh, he would repeat the purchase behavior in favor of the brand. In case his experience is dissatisfying he would switch over to another brand thus uh, and he, he would switch over to another brand and the purchase of another brand. So learning basically involves a change in behavior where because of uh, an experience which was dissatisfying the person learns not to uh, buy or not to indulge in an act of purchase for the same brand again. Beca in, in case the experience is satisfying he learns to in uh, you know in, in to, he learns to repeat a behavior where um, uh, or the act of purchase which has given him satisfaction. So learning involves a change in behavior. Second is uh, this change in behavior is relatively permanent. Uh, learning uh, will lead also leads to development of attitudes and unless and until a change is, an, uh, an effort is made to change 
behavior it continues for example if a person learns that uh, pepsodent toothpaste fights to to k for 24 hours and it is better than colgate now he because of this learning he develops a very uh, favorable attitude or he develops a dis predisposition towards uh, pepsodent uh, where uh, pepsodent is regarded as better than colgate so he will continue to purchase a brand a pepsodent it is only and only when another brand say colgate or close up begin to claim and they begin to provide lot of facts and lot of data uh, that they also fight to to gay they also fight to decay and they fight to decay better than pepsodent uh, it is only when this happens that the consumer may change his preference from pepsodent to another so the change which is occurs in behavior is relatively permanent if a person uh, if a person learns to uh, you know about colgate about pepsodent and about the goodness of pepsodent and begins to patronize it he will continue to do so until unless lot of effort is made uh, to actually uh, you know it changes views or changes attitude or about a pepsodent or a try to you know a lot of effort will be required to uh, you know to make him learn uh, about how other brands like colgate and close up may also also fight to do okay and a better or our at par with pepsodent so the marketer will have to provide in lot of facts lot of lo data and lot of logical reasoning so we say here that once learning occurs it is permanent in nature and uh, a lot of effort will uh, be required on the part of the marketer to help a consumer unlearn and then uh, relearn the third uh, characteristic of uh, learning is that the change in behavior occurs because of an experience whenever um, you know the, it, what we're trying to say in other words that there has to be some kind of an experience for learning to occur the experience could be either direct experience in the form of one's own experiences or it could be indirect in the form of experiences of others or through word of mouth a consumer will learn about products he learn about services or about brands and i either on his own or from others uh, he he will either uh, you know uh, his learning will either based be based on his efforts of gaining information or uh, of gaining information on his self or through word of mouth his uh, learning will either occur because of his own experiences or because of other people's experiences so a consumer learns about the product or service category and about the brands either on his own or from others uh, his pleasant experiences uh, with the brand uh, or the product category will lead to a positive opinion about the product category and the brand and he will eventually uh, develop a brand loyalty on the other hand an unpleasant experience uh, will uh, lead to negative uh, word of mouth and switch over to other brands and uh, any action followed by a dissatisfaction or a negative you know any action followed by a reaction uh, uh, whether satisfaction or dissatisfaction learning will take place and the consumer will learn either to buy the same brand or to change his brand so any and every uh, you know uh, experience actually any or every kind of experience either of self or of others leads to a change in behavior uh, the next characteristic of learning is that learning must be reinforced to have some impact we just discussed this uh, earlier that uh, if learning is is to occur there has to be some kind of a reinforcement if learning if the learning process if learning as a process is not reinforced the behavior will disappear now as we just said this reinforcement can be negative or positive and uh, through positive reinforcement uh, the consumer uh, learns to prefer to buy the same product or the brand again and in case of negative reinforcement he learns not to buy the same product or the same brand uh, in future so uh, a, a positive or re negative reinforcement will have some impact and until unless uh, any action is followed by a reinforcement learning will not take place the next characteristic of uh, learning is that learning also leads to development of attitudes we will see later on that uh, attitudes comprise three components uh, cognition effect and a uh, behavior and one of the major components of attitude is is knowledge is information and that actually comes from uh, learning so learning also leads to development of attitudes and uh, the next characteristic of learning is that apart from experiences consumer learning reflects the impact of marketing and non marketing communication as well as background characteristics so let us go into a little detail about this as we said consumer learning will reflect the impact of marketing uh, which is 
and non marketing communication marketing communication is commercial in nature and non marketing com uh, communication is in the form of uh, you know word of mouth so marketing uh, is uh, communication and non marketing communication uh, which is um, and as well as background characteristics will also affect uh, consumer learning marketing communication uh, is in the form of uh, commercial uh, sources which comes from advertising publicity sales promotion personal selling etc uh, interpersonal uh, uh, non marketing communication comes in the form of non commercial sources which could be interpersonal communication so both marketing communication as well as non marketing communication have a big role to play in consumer learning um, the marketer communicate the educates the consumer about the product or the service category about the attributes benefits features the price the availability uh, the consumer also learns about the brand uh, from the dealer or even through the packaging and the labeling uh, interpersonal communication from through friends peers work colleagues or opinion leaders or through word of mouth also impacts consumer learning so uh, apart from marketing and non marketing communication or commercial and non commercial sources one's own background characteristics also impact learning it consumer learning reflects one's demographic or personal or psychographic uh, characteristics so age uh, education income occupation lifestyle social class attitudes perception personality self concept self image uh, culture subculture cross culture all of these will have an impact on uh, you know consumer learning they will have an impact on the knowledge base of a person and they will have an they will influence consumer decision making his buying patterns and his consumption behavior um the next characteristic of learning is that learning is a cognitive process and can be only be inferred through our actions and behavior this is also similar to uh, one of the characteristics of attitude which we will discuss later that uh, we can only infer uh, attitudes we basically we cannot observe them or we cannot uh, basically they they are intangible we can only infer them so learning includes exposure to information processing uh, information uh, you know exposure to information information gathering information processing comprehension retention retrieval and so forth uh, but this learning whether or not it has actually taken place will only be uh, resultant through behavior and it is only this behavior which will uh, help us infer that whether learning has taken place or has not learning place uh, in terms of consumer behavior uh, we could explain learning by observing people's uh, reactions in a store for example a person is exposed to an advertisement uh, but whether he has actually been able to uh, you know uh, select that advertisement as a stimuli whether he's been able to gain information gather information or uh, process it and store it in his memory will actually uh, be seen when he goes to the store and asks for it or when he goes in goes to the store and puts in hand on that particular brand while he is uh, you know across different uh, shelves or different uh, sections in the particular mall or in the particular store so when as and when he uh, puts his hand and picks it up and puts it in his cart or in his shopping basket uh, we will come to know whether the the person has been able to uh, learn and develop an attitude or a uh, favorable uh, predisposition towards the particular brand or not also uh, we through you know through uh, you know encouraging uh, brand recall we will be able to know whether our advertisement has been effective or not uh, when when a person goes to the store and asks for a particular brand uh, he is in a way pulling it out from the shelf so this pull strategy is evident clearly will will tell us whether the person uh, has learned about the brand and the brand uh, is he is able to recall it he is able to retrieve it from his memory and this brand recall will also tell us whether the person whether consumer learning has been uh, effective or not uh, inter we will also see uh, consumer we can also say uh, talk about consumer learning by observing the behavior of people in the store majority of the people uh, for example who buy uh, health tonic for a child may be buying 
uh, comp plan this would basically give an input to uh, that that comp plan is a favorable brand it's a favored brand over others it's a popular brand and it is a favored over a boost or a bond beta so just as i said uh, the very fact that a consumer puts his hand on a places his hand on a particular uh, product or on a particular brand shows that he knows about it uh, he has a favorable attitude towards it or a or is liking it so in any form it could be either the cognition or the effect either the knowledge part or the liking part feeling part uh, which makes him uh, you know choose certain products or brands over others so this will uh, in this way we say whether learning has actually taken place or not depends upon how well we how 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 um, how depends upon uh, our you know uh, how well we can assess the consumer in the store how well we can assess his behavior in the store so um, uh, you know, uh, in case he the consumer puts his hand on a comp plan, uh, which is which he regards more popular and it favors over Bo Boost and Bon Vita. So, Heinz India, for example, would be able to interpret this part uh, or his behavior on the part of the consumer as consumer satisfaction and popularity with its brand comp plan. On the other hand, brands like uh, Gla uh, GlaxoSmithKline or Cadbury's, uh, which make uh, you know Boost and Bon Vita, would infer that they need to improve upon their bad brands which is boost and uh, bone vita respectively so you know learning is a cognitive process and it can only be inferred through our actions and through our behavior we will be only be able to again and in, you know whether learning has taken place we'll be able to judge only by observing people in a store the very fact that they you know recall certain brands the very fact that they favor certain brands over others means that they are favorably disposed towards such and this favorable disposition is a part of their cognition uh, which actually based on their uh, knowledge which they have gathered which they have stored and which they are using uh, you know by saying that they prefer a particular brand over the others they have learned to favor this particular brand over others because they learned that they, they, they according to their knowledge according to the cognition and according to their you know thinking patterns they they they, they have learned to feel that Le, that uh, a comp plan brand is better than a smith uh, a bonvita brand or a boost uh, the next characteristic of learning is that learning is a continuous process it is something which will happen and keeps on happening uh, people learn they they in uh, you know they gain knowledge they gain information uh, they also have day to day experiences all the time they interpret them they learn about them and uh, they, they, they store it in their memory for later uh, retrieval for retention and for later retrieval and usage as in when required. As they collect more information, as they uh, you know have newer and newer experiences, it keeps going. It uh, this keeps on getting added to the into their memory or to their knowledge base. But it also alters. It also modifies the existing database or the existing memory. So uh, whatever is stored in your memory as a part of information may get altered, may get modified, may get changed either because of new information uh, gathered by yourself or because of a uh, word of mouth or because of experiences of self and others so learning is something which is continuous it people will continue to gain information continue to gain knowledge uh, either on their own or through either through marketing communication or through interpersonal communication either through their own experiences or from others experiences and all this will get stored in their memory uh, which we, and it will get added to or it would modify the existing base of uh, information and which is stored in the memory and the upgraded information will have an which will be used for future action and for future behavior. Uh, another characteristic of learning is that learning may be specific or intentional uh, and learning is ongoing uh, incidental. Uh, now, uh, learning, uh, before we go into this, I will uh, you know speak about a little more about how learning uh, can be a continual process and in case it is continual, it becomes ongoing in nature. So, uh, you know there is marketing stimuli where we watch or read about newer products or services, the various brands, features, prices and we ponder about them or we think about them or uh, very often we have discussions with the family, with the friends, with our work colleagues on blogs. On on public forums or we have our experiences or direct and indirect 
So, uh, all of this is going to be a, you know a continuous process and uh, be uh, learning uh, in which is going to be ongoing. For example, if Samsung launches a new model of microwave uh, which is an improvised version over the others, the new inputs provided through the advertisement add up to the existing information we have about Samsung. So, when a person wants to buy a microwave, he would include this brand and this model in his evoked set or in his consideration set and he would be updated. So, uh, the day to day knowledge uh, keeps on adding to the memory as an updated knowledge and updated and it keeps on updating our memory and our knowledge base. So, that becomes ongoing, but let us uh, talk about learning uh, if it can be specific, intentional, uh, ongoing and incidental. Now, uh, learning can be either specific or intentional or as I just said when it is continuing it will be ongoing or it could be incidental. So, uh, for example, a student enters college and he wants to buy a laptop so that he can work on his uh, assignment. So, here he will search for information uh, you know very uh, consciously where Im immediately and uh, you know he will immediately get to the task of trying to know about the different uh, you know laptops or the different brands, uh, the different dealers, uh, the prices, uh, the features etcetera. So, learning is specific, it is intentional and it is directed to a specific need or a problem solving. It is deliberate in nature specific to the situation where the person has to make an immediate purchase. So, we say learning is specific or intentional in nature. On the other hand, let us take a case where uh, the same student uh, who was say 5 years ago, he was he thought that once he enters college, he will be buying a laptop for himself so that he can work on his assignments. And in that case, uh, he over these over this period of 5 years, he has been gaining knowledge, uh, reading about uh, you know the products, reading about different brands, the features, uh, the attributes, identifying evaluative criteria, looking for dealers, talking to people, maybe dealers or his friends or his colleagues or, or you know a, a, anybody around him, his neighbors and uh, or, or even uh, maybe he may be you know consulting an opinion leader or going to him for advice. So, over these past 5 years he has been doing this and the process is something the learning process information search is going to be ongoing the learning process is going to be something which is going to be very long drawn. He is searching for information which he is going to use much later and the, the process is ongoing the learning process gaining information updating his knowledge base is something which is happening on a very continuous basis. So, he intends making a purchase sometime in future and is adding up information to his uh, knowledge base. So, uh, we call it ongoing search for information and uh, incidental learning is something which occurs as a byproduct of others. Okay, so, uh, the person here uh, you know uh, did not actually think of buying it. Uh, it was not deliberately sought, it was totally unintentional and uh, this hap learning happened as a result of uh, an, an incident or an accident or without much effort as a matter of chance. So, the student go went to the mall and there he saw his mother buy a microwave where he was actually gone with his mother to buy a microwave and there he saw a demo of a laptop and uh, so, he, he the learning here uh, which happens is something which is very very incidental. So, these are the various uh, characteristics of learning. Now, let us move to the various approaches to uh, the uh, study of learning. When we talk about the approaches to learning, we say that there are two approaches to learning, the behavioral approaches to learning and the cognitive approach to learning. Now, we will talk of them in, in the form of two theories, the behavioral theory of learning and the uh, you know cognitive theory of learning. Now, according to the behavioral theory of learning, uh, learning within an individual takes place in response to events or happenings or stimuli in a person's external environment. So, um, they basically explain learning uh, in terms of observable responses to an external stimuli or as a relationship between a stimuli and a response. Okay, so, we, we talk of this learning here uh, which is uh, which happens as a result of a uh, response to events or to stimuli in the ex person's external environment. On the other hand, we have these cognitive theories where they say that learning actually happens as a result of a person's conscious and deliberate attempt to seek information, process information, store information which helps him in uh, problem solving or in future uh, purchases that he has to make. So, you know learning could either consumer learning could either be behavioral in nature or it could be cognitive in nature. So, let us discuss 
the two, two approaches in little detail. Now, uh, behavioral learning, as I just said, it occurs within an individual in response to events or happenings uh, or stimuli in a person's external environment. The main uh, proponents of this approach uh, were Ivan Pavlov and uh, B.F. Skinner. Uh, Pavlov conducted his famous experiments on the dog which we shall discuss subsequently and his theory came to be known as the theory of classical conditioning. And then there was Burhas Frederick Skinner who conducted uh, these experiments on rats and pigeons and his theory came to be known as the theory of operant conditioning or instrumental conditioning. Now, um, in order to illustrate the, the two approaches in terms of consumer behavior, we will take an example that a new uh, detergent plus uh, starch combination gel is being launched by Hindustan Unilever. So, uh, it is uh, you know especially designed for clo cotton clothes and the unique selling proposition of the product is that it not only cleans the product but also applies starch on them making them clean and crisp after application. So, uh, you know uh, we, we are talking of a new detergent, okay? it is a starch combination gel launched by Hindustan Unilever and it is designed for cotton clothes and, uh, and it is something which will not only clean the clothes uh, with the detergent, but also because of the starch it will um, you know apply starch on them and because of the starch gel uh, the, 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 uh, the clothes will automatically have you know starch on them making them very clean making them look very crisp after application. So, if we look at classical conditioning theory which we will discuss in detail a little while from now. A person who is loyal to Hindustan Unilever and buys many of their brands as he finds them to be of quality will also buy this new product. We will call this uh, stimulus generalization a principle which we will discuss uh, simultaneously uh, subsequently. On the other hand if we look at an operant conditioning or if we look at instrumental conditioning Hindustan Unilever decides to give free samples in small 25 gram pouches with products like Lux or Pepsodent. So, the person who would buy a Lux or Pepsodent would get a sachet of this product free and he will try it and if he finds uh, the brand satisfying, if he finds the product satisfying, he would desire buying a larger pack to be used regularly. So, there is a positive uh, reinforcement. So, what we are trying to say that uh, experiment while experimenting on uh, dogs, Pavlov was talking of some kind of a conditioning which takes place and we call it classical conditioning and here again because the person who buys from Hindustan Unilever uh, and he buys many of the brands and he finds them to be of quality, some level of conditioning has taken place and thus, thus he feels that the new product or the new detergent and starch combination will also be, give him the same quality. So, a conditioning has taken place. On the other hand, if we take the same example and we talk of the theory of operant conditioning which was proposed by Skinner, we say that he spoke about reinforcement and he spoke about you know, uh, you know trials and uh, reinforcement. So, a person in you know, Hindustan Unilever decides to give a free pouch with of this particular product new product a starch and a detergent uh, combination and with a Lux or with a Pepsodent he gives these products he gives this new product free and if the person uses it he tries it he uses it he finds it the experience satisfying and he would learn to repeat behavior and he would buy larger quantities of the pack uh, you know to be used regularly. So, uh, we will talk more about uh, this classical conditioning, we will talk about more about stimulus generalization and as well as operant conditioning and reinforcement uh, and trial and reinforcement subsequently. But let us now come to the cognitive approach to learning. Now, according to the cognitive theorists, they said that learning does not, learning actually occurs uh, not because of uh, the, the environment or because of stimuli in the environment or because of a connection or a relationship between response and stimuli, but it is uh, because of a person's conscious attempt, deliberate attempt at information gathering, processing, storage and uh, which will help him later on, uh, which actually helps, uh, which actually occurs as a result of problem solving. So, he says uh, there occurs a problem and a person uh, enters into a deliberate uh, attempt attempt at search for information, uh, information processing and storage activity which in response to this problem solving and it is this which will help him uh, develop learning. So, learning is a function of mental processing and uh, the person who actually spoke about cognitive learning was um, uh, Edward Tolman who basically experimented on rats. Now, in terms of consumer behavior any kind of extensive problem solving on the part of the consumer is cognitive and uh, will be included under this approach. 
So, uh, these are uh, the two approaches to the theory of uh, learning. Now, let us come to the learning theories and their implications for a marketer. Uh, we will be talking about it in three parts. We will be discussing part one here, where we will be talking about uh, you know uh, the, the behavioral approach to learning and we will be studying one theory, which is Pavlov's theory of learning. Uh, we will talk about the experiment, we will talk about uh, the theory, but we will uh, you know about how, how uh, Pavlov came up with his theory, what his experiment was. Uh, we will speak about that, uh, we will conclude there and we will then talk about the implications and drawing uh, you know or how, how to draw upon this theory or the implications from this theory we will be speaking of in the next session. So, as I just said there are two approaches to learning the behavioral approach and the cognitive approach. So, according to the behaviorals learning takes place in response to events or happenings in the environment and the cognitive theorists say that learning basically takes place as a result of conscious effort uh, on the part of the consume or on the part of an individual to collect information uh, and process it and store it. So, uh, you know we will talk about the behaviorist approach with implications for marketers in this particular uh, session. So, uh, the behavior, this particular approach or uh, which is the behavioral learning theory uh, talks of learning or defines learning in response to uh, you know in, in, in terms of an association between a stimulus and response where the stimulus is an external object or a person or a situation that is person will sense or perceive and the response is the behavior of the person that occurs as a uh, in reaction to the object or the person or the situation. So, uh, what we are talking of here in behavioral learning theories is that learning occurs as a result of a relationship between stimulus and response. What is the stimulus? Stimulus is an external object or a person or a situation. In our case, it could be a product and or a brand or any of the four P's uh, which a person senses or which a person perceives. This is what we call as a stimulus. The response is in terms of the behavior of the person to this uh, object or to this person or to this situation and uh, it, or it could be a product or a price or uh, the any of the other P's. So, uh, learning basically occurs because of an association between the two. Now, the behavioral learning theories are based on certain assumptions. Uh, the assumptions are people learn to associate the stimuli and the response. They begin to relate the stimulus and the response and they generalize the relationship across situations. Whenever the stimulus occurs, there is a similar response. This is what this particular theory assumes. Um, observable responses to the specific stimuli are reflective and symbolic of the fact that learning has taken place. Thus, these theories are also known as the stimulus response theories. Okay. So, uh, what we are talking of here is that number one people will relate or tend to associate a stimulus with a response. They will uh, say uh, they will they will try to form a relationship between the two and draw generalizations that whenever uh, uh, you know a stimulus occurs there will be a similar response and uh, thus you know the th theories have been also referred to as the stimulus response theories. So, um, here uh, the main proponents as we said were Pavlov and Skinner. Uh, they both spoke about the relationship between the stimulus and the response, but the difference was Pavlov spoke about a relationship in terms of SR or stimulus leading to a response, but Skinner spoke of a response leading to a stimulus or the R leading to the S. So, Pavlov spoke of S leading to R, stimulus leading to response and Skinner spoke of R leading to S or response leading to stimulus. Uh, there was, uh, let us uh, talk about the theory of classical conditioning by Pavlov who was a Russian psychologist and in the 1920s uh, he introduced this theory as a part of his pioneering work and experiments on dogs. So, Pavlov believed that all living entities are passive in nature and they can be taught how to behave through repetition or through conditioning and he says learning occurs as a result of relationship where stimulus leads to a response, learning takes place via conditioning. Learning will become conditioned, learning becomes conditioned when a stimulus that is paired with another stimulus uh, that leads to a known response serves to produce the same stimulus when, uh, when, uh, when used alone. 
so uh, pavlov uh, began uh, pavlov basically uh, conducted uh, his experiments on dog and he showed how the process of conditioning could occur through a series of experiments uh, which 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 uh, he, he he conducted on dogs so uh, he initially he gave meat uh, which was an unconditioned stimulus to the dog and as natural there was a great deal of salivation or an unconditioned response so an unconditioned stimulus led to an unconditioned response uh, when he merely rang the bell or when there was a neutral response uh, neutral stimulus there was no response or there was no salivation in the next phase uh, he combined the two uh, he gave meat to the dog as well as he rang the bell so an unconditioned stimulus in the form of meat and a conditioned stimulus in the form of the bell the both of them uh, were combined us plus cs leading to an unconditioned response in the form of salivation so he repeated the pairing many times over a period of time and in the last phase pavlov uh, just rang the bell without giving the meat which was he 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 just used the conditioned stimulus and the dog salivated to the sound of the conditioned stimulus alone so there was a conditioned response to this conditioned stimulus so if you see the dog associated the bell sound of the the sound of the bell uh, conditioned stimulus with the meat are unconditioned stimulus and after a number of pairings between the conditioned stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus he gave the same response in the form of salivation to the bell alone as he had been doing to the meat alone so before conditioning you have the meat unconditioned stimulus leading to salivation and unconditioned response uh, during conditioned it is unconditioned stimulus with with a conditioned stimulus leading to an unconditioned response and finally after conditioned the bell alone led to salivation so a conditioned stimulus led to salivation so in con conceptual terms uh, pavlov said conditioning takes place if uh, unconditioned stimulus results in an unconditioned response subsequently an unconditioned stimulus paired with a conditioned stimulus will lead to the same response which will now become a conditioned response so finally upon repeated pairings the conditioned stimuli alone would elicit the same conditioned uh, response now if we okay, use it in terms of an example on consumer behavior uh, for example a uh, example of a store and its patronage so a uh, himalaya soap could be an unconditioned stimulus and the purchase and loyalty would be an un uh, you know conditioned response uh, the frank ross pharmacy alone where the particular soap is being sold leads to no response uh, because i am fond of himalaya soap i i and I'm, i i exhibit loyalty to it during conditioning Uh, himalaya soap is placed in frank ross pharmacy and it leads to an unconditioned response in the form of a purchase after conditioning with repeated visits to the store uh, frank ross pharmacy which becomes a conditioned uh, stimulus and purchase and store loyalty results in the and it that is a part of the unconditioned response uh, the assessment to the theory it's a pioneering work which has contributed immensely to the theory of learning and um, the limitation is that the theory is inadequate uh, it does not actually uh, talk anything about the element of uh, cognition uh, he he said he said that uh, you know it it has been argued that learning is not just a reflective process there is always an element of cognitive uh, or learning and so we associate learning with cognitive associative learning the dog had learned to expect an association between the two he had learned to accept an association which influenced him so they say that uh, this talking of a uh, relationship between stimulus leading to response and the entire learning process being a reflective reflexive only is inadequate there is always an element of cognition so um, we will talk about the implications uh, for marketers in the next session with this uh, we conclude uh, with this particular session and talking about the references uh, there is asel uh, loudon and delabitta cotler and keller peter and olson shiffman and kanuk and wells and prensky frequently asked questions what do you mean by consumer learning discuss the basic elements of learning and discuss the nature and characteristics of consumer learning self evaluation questions true and false learning is temporary a temporary change in behavior uh, this is a false statement learning uh, is a permanent change in behavior statement 2 negative reinforcement could develop brand loyalty this is a false statement incidental learning is long drawn uh, this is again which is it is something this is a true statement so incidental learning is long drawn it is a true statement coming to fill in the blanks a dash may be defined as a weak stimulus that gives strength and direction to the motives the answer is cues if a behavior is 
followed by a response that is pleasant or rewarding, the behavior gets dash reinforced. Positively reinforced, the likely of the likelihood of repetition of that behavior dash it increases. Third, the addition of knowledge to the memory bank is referred to as associative network. Four, the learning which is deliberate in nature and specific to the situation is referred to as specific or intentional learning. Five, according to the behavioral approach, learning within an individual takes place in response to events or happenings in a person's external environment. Five, the two learning theories that are based on behavioral approach to learning are, uh, cl are uh, classical and operant conditioning. For multiple choice questions, a lady goes to buy bread. There in the store she sees a new range of ready to eat non veg food. This is an example of dash learning. This is an example of specific incidental or ongoing or none of the above. This is an example of incidental learning. So, this is B. Uh, what is not related to cognitive learning? Learning takes place as a result of person's conscious and deliberate information processing and storage activity. B. Proponent is Pavlov. C. Information storage and retrieval. D. All of the above. So, what is not related to cognitive learning? B. The proponent Pavlov is not related to cognitive learning, he is related to classical learning. Short answers mention the four elements of learning. Uh, so, motives, cues, re response, and reinforcement. To pre briefly mention how price and place can act as cues. So, you can show how discounts, how sales or how uh, bargains can lead to uh, you know give direction to motives or how the store display, store uh, location, layout, window dressing can lead to uh, give strength to uh, motives. And three, there are two approaches to the study of learning, name them, they are behavioral theories of learning and cognitive theories of learning. With this, uh, we come to the conclusion of this session on learning. We shall continue uh, with the theory of classical conditioning and its implications for the marketer as well as the other theories in the next session. Thank you.